Hello, my name is Edward Anter. Um, we come from different teams in, in Red Hat. I'm from the, the Overt, the ones that create the Overt. And I'm in the network services team. Uh, we want to speak to tell you about a challenge we had with uh, when, we, when we work on Overt. We had a, a problem that we wanted to configure the Linux networking. And, and we already do it today, but we do it using IFCFG files. And with the future that IFCFG files are slowly dying and not maintained anymore, we wanted to do something more current, which is mainly Network Manager today, and add all kinds of new features which we were missing. And when we started working on that, um, it doesn't work. Um, when we started working on that, we found out that actually many projects, some of them here, actually need the same thing. They, they also look to configure the network part of, of the Linux, and everyone is doing it very differently, like some of using so for example, Overt is using IPCFG and IPRoute 2 and Netlink and all kinds of other options. Uh, OpenStack mainly uses IPCFG, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, as you can see, everyone is doing something else. And, and it, it became obvious that if we, if we start working with Network Manager and we invest in logic on how to do it, it makes sense to do something that can serve everyone. So we, we suggested that this is very complex. We, don't, we want to simplify it for, for us and for everyone else. And hopefully the others will also contribute to, to our work. I'll, just, I'll try to uh, show you the, what we mean by this NM state uh, solution. So this is how we configure a bond with slaves and an IP address on uh, using Network Manager and NMCLI. This is how we configure it using IP Route 2. And this is how we configure it with IFCFG. It's for each interface we have. Uh, I mean, we have for the bond an IFCFG file and two files for the slaves. And this is how we, we configure it using NM state. So this is the project itself. Um, so our intention and what we created until now is to have one layer and hopefully every one of the project and many others, at least these are the ones that we focus currently, will use this uh, declarative way to configure the Linux networking. And that, that layer will use the LibNM and Network Manager and whatever it's needed to configure the the Linux kernel. So now let's get to the design design of NM state. Earlier we saw that, for example, Orbit was using a lot of different tools, and this was because it needs to have the complete Linux network state, so not just only part of this. And one idea of NM state is really to capture everything that's important about networking on a Linux house in one central place. And this state should not be used only to be able to configure the networking, but you get the same use, can use the same format for reporting. So, for example, if you want to uh, have a system that's configured the way you want, and you want to replicate this, you can just get a report from the current state, maybe adjust network card names or MAC addresses, and then apply the state to a different machine, and you get the, fin uh, the same result. And for this, state definition, we just want to do it declarative, so this means it can be represented in JSON or YAML or as a Python dictionary with really simple values. And then this allows other tools to build on top of this that also need some kind of declarative uh, interface. And then all the logic can be in NM state and you only need to map, for example, the schema that we're using in NM state to the schema you're using somewhere else. Or maybe we will even adjust the schema in NM state because we are not really interested in defining a schema that everyone has to use, but we want to make it easy to have some kind of declarative schema 
and we just had to choose something to start with. The design itself, or the idea, it's inspired by an industry standard for network uh, devices, which is NetConf and YAM, where you have something that defines the network configuration of these devices in a unified way. And there's a lot of uh, RFCs about this. It's all XML, so we didn't want to start doing XML, but we prefer JSON or YAML, but it should still be easy to map from our declarative way to XML, if you would like to add this. Another key feature uh, that was important for us is that you can um, have atomic changes. So, for example, you know this from network devices where you can check the configuration, then apply it. Uh, you co can collect the changes, then check it, apply it, and it will apply them or it will, you can roll back. But with Linux networking, you don't have this possibility nowadays. So, for example, if you need to move the configuration from a single interface into a bridge or a bond device and it fails in between, then you might um, end up in a state where you cannot access the machine anymore because you either need at least the IP address on the single interface or on the bridge interface. And we want to make sure that um, when you define a state, we verify whether or not it's correct. And if it's not correct, we will walk back to the previous state. So you can rely on having either the one state or the other one. The design, it's currently based on Network Manager because it's the best solution to manage all kind of different networking aspects nowadays. But of course, it cannot uh, handle everything. There might be some edge cases, for example, for vendors that provide um, their proprietary solutions that customers would like to use. And therefore, we are also open to add um, other backends for features that cannot be added to a network manager. And it might also be easier to add them now to NM State because it's still a young project. And then eventually they can also end up in network manager if it makes sense to implement them for um, a more wider audience. Currently, we already support the basic settings, which make it easy to figure out whether this concept is, makes sense for someone. So it's, Ethernet devices, of course, with IPv6 and IPv4 configuration, both static and dynamic addresses, and um, basic aggregation types like bonding, Linux bridges, and even OV initial OVS bridges support. We are still, currently we are mostly using what Network Manager is already providing, and then uh, also focusing on the other aspects like um, the um, co configuration verification to ensure that everything is working well together. To do this, there's, of course, a command line interface that makes it easy to show what we are working in, to test this, to demonstrate this, but it's not the final interface that everyone else needs to use. Um, but, for example, we can use it here to just show what the state would look like. So this would be, uh, so here you have the reporting, you get the current state of ETH zero, and then you can use this one uh, to apply to a different machine with the, uh, and only, for example, change the interface name. Or if you want to use the API, it's also very simple. It's basically the same methods. You have um, a method to get the current state, net info show, and you have apply to apply the state. And for example, if you just want to change the MTU, you take the current state, change the MTU value, apply it, and then afterwards the MTU will be changed. and then. As a human, you can easily look at the JSON configuration of your current host system. It, in my opinion, it's very self-explanatory. So you just see what you need to do, and you don't have to dig through different tools. There's also, um, from the uh, Ansible network side, um, a standard <coughs> where they um, agreed on a common interface across several network modules, where a lot of vendors um, provides uh, support for their network devices like Cisco, Juniper, and I think dozens of others. But there's nothing yet um, to configure Linux host networking the same thing. And because with NM state, we already have the possibility to map the declarative state to um, the Linux host networking state. It's also very easy to implement these modules. So we also started implementing them and they just create like the mapping from the configuration, which we can see here So at the left-hand side. This is um, how you would configure um, link aggregation 
Uh, and this would work across all kinds of different network devices. And with NM state, uh, we have a module that would just uh, translate this state to the NM state state representation, and then you can apply it as well. But from the user perspective, it just looks like this, and it's very easy uh, for, the, for the programmer to do this, uh, to implement this even for other schemas, if you like. So we, uh, I also talked about um, verification and rollback, and so that's something that I would like to use to demonstrate um, the current state of NM state with a simple example. So here we have um, one machine, and on the right hand side you see um, the current network configuration as it's stored on disk. And I have um, an example state file. Oh, it was. So this is just to configure a bond interface called WebBond with two slaves, ETH1, ETH2, and also a VLAN on top of this. And then I can use uh, NM state CTL set apply this, there's a lot of debug output, and then on the right hand side you see there's the configuration files on disk. And you can also run NMCLI to get the current connections, and you see that uh, the bo um, bond interface was created successfully, and also the VLAN on top of this. And there's also the edit command, so these are basically, oh, um, I didn't mean to edit everything, so I can edit just the web bond interfaces. And then uh, I want to reset the system, um, so I can afterwards demonstrate you the rollback. So I just say absent for both the WebBond um, interface and the VLAN interface, I run it. And you see um, the configuration is gone and also the, um, the, the interfaces are gone in the NMCLI output. And now I will use this playbook copy it and, oh, it's already there. And uh, so the uh, idea is now to um, create a state that would fail and to artificially um, create a failure to show you the rollback. I will just add something like fail true. So it's not, it's an invalid value, but something that NM state cannot really find in the resulting output because there's no transition to uh, get it report fail to. This means when I now um, apply this, for a brief moment the uh, interface will be created, but then it notices here at the time that the outcome state doesn't have this property because nothing maps to this, and then it rolls back to the previous state. And now I will hand over again to Eddie who will show us another feature that we implemented with NM state. So, does anyone is familiar with Kubernetes here? No? So we, we, one of the, the work of, we found out that it is, this one is also useful for allowing Kubernetes or some extension of Kubernetes that we hope will, like, will be accepted to configure uh, the node, the networking on the nodes. Today, Kubernetes is not interested in, co in managing the node networking. So they don't care if you have a bond there or, uh, or the bridge or whatever. They just want connectivity to exist. And they rely on someone else to do it. So this is a, a suggestion, a CLD that was, this one here, it was presented in order to allow Kubernetes itself to, so you can define the node networking through Kubernetes itself, through its API. It's like an extension of it. So we, what we do, what, if, if you are interested, you are welcome to click on that link after our talk. But what we are doing there, we have like two schemas. One is uh, called node, node net config policy, and the second one is the node network state. The policy says something it has a match, which is, for example, on the nodes and the, on the current state of the, the nodes, and then ap apply snippet. It will, the policy will generate states for the nodes, and then the, the, that state for the node will be applied, like in our case. So there is one, I wrote here a small example. So if we can say in the policy that on every node in the cluster, 
on every SRI of, SRI of V <coughs> can stack here. On SRI of V interface, we want to define eight virtual functions, and it will go to each of the each of the nodes, it will read the state of their nodes, we'll understand that the interfaces are SRV, and we'll go and update the, the desired state there to, to 8. So in this case, for the first one, ETH0 and ETH1 are SRV, so it defines 8 there, and so on. Uh, this is the main idea, and this, we, we hope that this, it will be accepted. It's mainly interested, interesting. When, we, when containers will start working on bare metal, not like today, they are working on many on virtual machines. So then it will be very important to have something like that. Um, this is an example of, of, of the CRD, uh, how it looks like. The, the beginning is some uh, Kubernetes uh, stuff, and the rest is very similar to what we saw earlier. It maps almost identically to the, to the NM state schema. Um, uh, we, we found that, the, that there were several challenges in working with, desire, with declarative uh, states, which were not expected at the beginning at least. One of them is when you change something, like for example, in this example, when you want to say IPv4 enable DHCP there, Sometimes this, this uh, has uh, implication on other parameters. For example, if you say DHCP enable and it gets an IP address, the current, the actual state, the current state will have an IP address there. So how will you check that the desired state is, is actually like the current state? So in some cases, this one, there is also auto-negotiation of the link because you want to say that I want to have uh, speed auto-negotiation with speed uh, 10 gig, and maybe it, it, it got uh, 1 gig, or something like that. So this challenge is, uh, needs to be resolved like, specifically to the, to the case that we are working on. So, and there are many debates on how to handle it. So, this is a, a continuous challenge that we see every time we add something new. Yeah, so the other challenge is also if you want to remove something. So, if, for example, you only have the state for the actual interface configuration, but not a possibility to explicitly say, just remove this IP address in a declarative way, except to get all the current IP addresses, remove the one that you don't want to have, and then say you want all the other ones. So the, the, there are some limitations in how you can express things in a declarative way, or you have to do some kind of um, compromises in there. So uh, I guess I see you are very excited about this. And you just want us to shut up and take your money. But <laughs> it's free software, so you can just get it on nmstate.io. Um, and it's currently packaged already in Fedora. It's available in Apple testing. And we also have a copper repository where you get um, automatic rebuilds on, after every commit on master. And we have uh, also some kind of CI that gates all the pull requests. It's available on Pi, Pi as well, so you can do pip install or something. You can run it from the um, GitHub repository. And we're also uh, working on supplying container images, so you just can run a container and play on a container with Network Manager and NM State CTL and see if it suits your needs. And if you would like to participate in the development, everything is happening openly. So um, development is at GitHub, where we have pull requests uh, in the source code. We also do some planning on Jira, which is the, uh, so the Atlassian.net is the upstream free Jira instance where you still need, a, you need an account, but you don't uh, need any extra permissions to access this. And we are, um, we are currently just discussing topics on the network manager mailing list um, because it mainly affects things with network manager and there's an IRC channel on Freenode IRC hashtag NMState. So what are we planning to develop in the future? So uh, currently under review is already adding routing support, which is also a little bit of challenge, and a few other things. But uh, yeah, we also want to get your feedback. If, you, if there's something that you would like to have that you see is important, then just speak up now, or what are your other questions, and you will get some candy if you dare yeah, to participate.
So the question was, what's uh, the Debian support? And basically, uh, we are building on top of Network Manager. So of course, the problem with Debian might be that Network Manager is too old uh, if you have stable Debian. But everything that's handled through Network Manager will work with NM state as well, because uh, Network Manager is our abstraction layer. Any more questions? I have a lot. Of <laughs> OK, then. But it is like the, the idea was to have. Please repeat the question. Oh, sorry. So he ask, he's asking if uh, we call it a provider, the, the back end of how to implement the, the, the declarative way, uh, how to implement it not with using network measure, but with something else that is maybe low level, like uh, Netlink or something really low for embedded systems, as an example, because network measure may be too costly there, right? So uh, yes, it was, it is, I mean, if someone will come and say this is very important and it makes sense, either he can join the effort and create a provider for the, for implementing it through something else. It's, it's like, we hope, we are going to make it pluggable, the provider's part. So currently, network management is the main focus, but we will reverse the dependency so it will just plug in and implement the scheme. And also, we're working closely with the network manager team. So if there are any specific concerns about resource consumption, and maybe they can be addressed in network manager directly. And then network manager will also suit the use case on low power devices. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But we can try, if you, if you are interested, we can do like a small demo to do something specific. It's not we are using a lot of features from Network Manager, like the rollback po portion, which is like they give it to us. So we use it. The persistency is done through Network Manager, but it's, it doesn't say we cannot do it without it. You start that it's written in Python. You don't really can run Python on all the Python is also. That that was also right. So there, there were we were talking with the CoreOS guys, and they uh, they were requesting. <laughs> At Bootstrap, not to if they want to use it, it's a problem, problem for them to use Python. So they one of the suggestions was to write it in some more compact, uh, like Go or. But it is like there is not enough force there at the moment. But it is not something that we don't we think it's not possible. All right. Um, I think you have already there are like tens of. Uh, Network configuration modules for the um, for the network equipment from different vendors, right? And uh, it's impossible in current state. It's impossible to use just one declarative way to configure, for example, network switch, uh, and that it would work with Ansible to Arista and to Cisco and to some other switch. Yeah, right? But that's actually uh, it yes. exists currently. Yes. For example, a lab, lab uh, link aggregation is possible to do it. If you want to d define an IP address, it's possible to do it. You just need to say what is the on the other side. Only declaring in Ansible, you say it's Cisco. It's uh, and then yes, it will work. You have to explicitly tell them. Yeah, but maybe we will talk just after the uh, right. presentation because right. we are out of time now. Okay. Thank you very much, and everyone else who enjoyed this presentation.